Here we have a challenging problem. A small block of mass M rests on the rough sloping side of a triangular block of mass capital M, which itself rests on a horizontal frictionless table, as shown in figure 5.41, this one. If the coefficient of static friction is mu, determine the minimum horizontal force F applied to uppercase M that will cause the small block M to start moving up the incline. And hopefully you can picture this situation carrying out, right? So if this teal block is moving to the right fast enough, you can expect that maybe this uh, yellow block will start to slide up the incline. But in order to do that, it's going to have to overcome two things. First, it has its force of gravity, which is acting straight down and partially down the slope as well. It also has to overcome the friction the roughness of the surface here, which if we're intending to move that way, will certainly be pulling us that way. So let's look at some, well, a method on how to figure out what all of these unknowns are and put them all together in a hopefully sensible and easy to follow solution. Here in physics, it's great to try and come up with one true statement at a time until you have enough statements and enough variables are confirmed that you can answer the question that was given to you. Here we're looking for capital F. Let's try and write down a true statement involving capital F. Let's consider this object here. It has a mass, total capital M plus M. Let's figure out the net forces on it. Well, there's one force. So when I talk about the sum of the forces on my big object here, I'm simply talking about adding up all the forces, and the only force that's there to add up is the thing called capital F. Now it's the net force, sigma F, that is by definition MA, Newton's second law. However, instead of just using M, I'm going to use lowercase m plus capital M. And I'm going to write A for the acceleration of the system and say that that's equal to F. Now, that's a fairly helpful thing. It kind of tells me that really what I'm after here, if I'm going to answer this problem, is this. This is the thing I need, because F is going to be this A times M plus M, and M plus uppercase M is known. It's just arbitrary, so this is going to be one of those symbolic problems. However, that is the end of that story. I can't go anywhere else with that, so I'll have to come back to it later, and we'll have to see what other true statements we can write involving this problem. It is my intention to start writing down statements about the lowercase m. So let's start tackling this by thinking about all the forces that are in play on lowercase m. We have something we could best call a normal force, Fn, perpendicular to the surface it's sitting on. We have, as usual, going straight down, the force of gravity. We have also uh, something opposing the motion that we're intending to have, which is going to be called FF, or the force of friction. However, these arrows are going all different directions, and I better resolve things into an axis. And my intention is to resolve things into the same set of axis that this force is acting on. Okay, so we'd like to have x, y set up like this. Let's see what we can do to sort of restate some of these forces in terms of an x, a uh, horizontal, and a y axis only. So let's trace over these with uh, a, a bolder color and let's do some transformations here. So let's talk about the y-axis. As far as the y-axis is concerned, this guy we can keep, okay? We can keep Fg. As for Ff and Fn, we're going to need to do some adjustment. They both partially point up, so I need to figure out expressions for, sorry, they both partially point in the vertical direction. So I have to figure out expressions for each of them adjusted for the y-axis. We're going to do some quick geometry here, and if I went all the way through it, this video would go on for very long. Um, but see if this is good enough, and if it's not, uh, leave some comments in the question, some questions in the comments, and I'll try and adjust it. But basically, I'm going to have to use this theta, okay, which I can prove is the same as this theta, okay, this thing that I've sort of drawn uh, on the same line as Fn, and I'm going to let that help me figure out what Fn is, because if I go up this way, 
and I say this, then I'm dealing with vertical angles. All right, so this is going to be helpful. Watch what I do now in dark green. I now say that Fn adjusted for the y axis here is actually going to be Fn uh, cosine theta. Okay, you can see that we're interested in the adjacent side of what becomes this triangle. So that's why I use cosine theta. Again, got some geometry uh, background that I'm choosing to skip over uh, for now in this video. Okay, we also have to talk about FF. It would be great to sort of figure out what um, the name of this vector that represents the downward facing portion of FF is. And to that end, I'm going to say that this thing, if you look at the right angle I've created here, that thing can be 90 minus theta. Okay, that means that one way of expressing this uh, downward facing arrow in a Kind of running out of real estate, but I'll do it over here. Okay, one way of expressing this downward facing arrow is FF uh, cosine of 90 minus theta. However, that looks a little bit silly. Okay, I can instead say that it's FF sine of theta. The cosine of a complement is the same as the sine of the original angle. So that's what I'm going to choose to use. So I'll put this over here. I'll kind of put it over there and I'll name that ff sine theta. Okay, because of that, we have a statement about the y-axis that's sensible now. We can now say that the net force in the y-axis is made up of the following things. We can say a positive fn cosine theta. From that, we can subtract an ff sine theta, and we can also subtract fg. All right. Now, we can also say that this is equal to uh, M-A-Y, lowercase M-A-Y. So I'm going to write the, all this out. Fn cosine theta, Ff sine theta, minus Fg. And now we're going to start getting specific, OK? Remember uh, what we said and what we're looking for. We're looking for the maximum force, and it's going to show up in here eventually, but we're looking for the situation where this guy goes up, okay, where this guy goes up, which means partially going straight up in the vertical sense if you break it up into its components. The precipice at which this happens will be when the acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero. I'm going to set that as the minimum condition. Okay, so I'm going to zero out this entire statement. Zero will be equal to Fn cosine theta minus Ff, sorry, Ff sine theta minus Fg. And now I'm going to start getting as specific as I can. I don't know much about Fn, but I can say that Ff, by definition, the force of friction is equal to mu Fn. I can say that, so I can make that substitution. And that reduces some of the variables that are in play here. And of course, instead of the force of gravity Fg, I can say Mg. Right, so this process has actually left me with one variable, Fn. So my knee-jerk reaction to any equation that has one unknown variable is to start solving for it. So let's do that real quick. Um, I'm going to move the mg over to the other side, and we're going to have this Fn cosine theta minus mu Fn sine theta being equal to mg. I will factor out Fn leaving cosine theta minus mu sine theta. And I will divide both sides by that chunk. We have mg over cosine theta minus mu sine theta. It's not what we were looking for. It's not the same as this, but I claim it has to be helpful. And it'll probably be helpful. Uh, and how it's going to be helpful is probably going to become apparent when we move over to the x-axis, which I intend to do now. Right, so check it out. Let's once again look at all of the actual forces that are acting on our block, and then plan on resolving them for the x-axis. So as before, I had Fn, I had Fg, and I had Ff. Okay, I also have those useful angles that I laid out, which I'll go ahead and lay out again. 
Now I must think of in terms of the things that are facing in the uh, horizontal direction, which does not involve fg. It only involves the rightward facing parts of the ff vector and the fn vector. So let's resolve the fn vector. It's not too hard to prove that the fn vector is equal in magnitude to fn sine theta. Nor is it hard to prove that the ff vector is going to be expressed as ff cosine theta. These are all the forces in play in the x-axis. So I go ahead and I start talking about the sum of forces in the x-axis, which are equal to fn sine theta plus ff cosine theta. And of course I say that this is equal to ma x, the acceleration in the x direction. But wait, this is better, even better than it looks, because this a is going to be the same as that a. Remember, this is the, this was going on in the x-axis too. So by equating these two, we're matching up, we're finally bringing it full circle and back to the situation we started where we talked about f. So we definitely are getting closer. I'm going to replace this with m a. Um, also, as I did before, I will be getting more specific, and I will be replacing the ff here with what we said it was before, mu fn. Okay, so taking stock of the situation, we are nearly there. Um, if we solved this for a, let's do that. We'll say a is equal to, um, well, fn sine theta plus mu fn cos theta over m. And I just simplified that a little bit, okay? So I said that a was equal to, um, I'm gonna factor out this fn out of the whole fraction there. I get fn, and then it leaves sine theta plus mu cos theta over m, I'm in pretty good shape because this thing has already been solved for. So let's see what happens when I plug this version of Fn into this. I say that acceleration is equal to mg over cos theta minus mu sine theta. I have enough room just barely, times sine theta plus mu cos theta, oh, almost, okay, over m. Uh, I cancel out these m's, and the most succinct possible expression of a is going to be g sine theta plus mu cos theta over cos theta minus mu sine theta. And this is exactly what I want, because I'm simply going to replace it now with this. So finally, we can say that the force is going to be equal to A, so G sine theta plus mu cos theta over cos theta minus mu sine theta times M plus m. And I'll pretty much just end the problem there, or or I'll just write it as neatly, I guess, as I possibly can. I'll write it all as one fraction. I'll have g m plus uppercase m sine theta plus mu cos theta all over cos theta minus mu sine theta. And if I do say so myself, that's a nice looking formula. So there's the solution to that problem. The hardest part, I think, is going to be the geometry that we have to do over here, the resolution of these vectors into their, um, into their vertical and horizontal parts. Um, so if that happens to be an issue for you, do leave a comment and I will try. I will try, can't guarantee anything, but I will try to maybe make a supplementary video that addresses that issue. Thank you for watching.